Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Before we introduce this week's guest, I want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. Patreon's a great way to support everything Cool Tools does, including our newsletters, our podcast, video channel, and our review website. This week, we'd like to thank the following Patreon supporters, Les Howard, Lauren Bass, Mock Nerd, Malton Make, Mark Goebel, Matt Gromes, Michael Douglas, Michael Jones, and Michael Pecorini. To become a patron of Cool Tools, visit patreon.com slash cool tools. Our guest this week is Meredith Arthur. In 2015, after working at a string of startups, Meredith created the website Beautiful Voyager for overthinkers, perfectionists, and people pleasers. At Pinterest, where she is a content design lead, Meredith focuses on emotional well-being innovation. She's also the author of Get Out of My Head, which we will be talking about a little later in the podcast. Hi, Meredith. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It sounds like you have a lot of Michaels who are supporting you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's we're, a, we're, we're, a, we're a Michael magnet. <laughs> Yay for Michaels. <laughs> yes. yes, only Michaels are allowed to support it's, us. <laughs> Meredith, it's, it's wonderful to have you here. We're really looking forward to some of your uh, picks for us. I'm thrilled to share them. What a, what a fun opportunity to think about what works. Cool. I'm so excited to find out about your tools. And I took a sneak peek at them and they're all like really amazing, cool stuff. Tell us about this first one called a Megan. It's pronounced Megan, Megan bed. Okay. This one is, this is just such an unusual thing that I happened upon. Um, I had a friend of the family who has scoliosis and she found out about this Megan bed, which was originally created in South Korea but really now is available all over the world. And it's basically a massage table that you have at your house. Uh, Kind of like when you're in the airport and you see those chairs that give you a massage, this Mm -hmm. is a flat table that does the same. And it combines infrared heating with jade balls that roll up and down your back, neck, and legs. Oh, my God. And it's, I, it's, it's amazing, by the way. And I found um, that, yes, you can buy it at a Megan store or online, but you can also look for used Megan beds. Um, and I happened to find a used one, and it was um, a lot less expensive than, mm-hmm. than you might expect. And it's really changed my life. I do it every day. And as a chronic pain sufferer, it's a really incredible tool. So, so it's not something you would sleep on. It, it's more like it's for therapy or that you would spend. That's exactly right. It's, you would not sleep on this. It, it feels when you first lay down, it actually feels a little strange. Like, wait, are these balls in the right place? And they're on your hip bones and, you know, and then you, you get it started. And at first it almost hurts. It almost feels like, wait, what is this? This is so unusual. But over time it becomes indispensable, um, especially for headaches and for, you know, lower back pain or even for calf tension. Um, and I, so I do it about half an hour a day. Okay. And does one size fits all? I mean, in terms of the It's one size fits ball. all. It's one size. Yeah. I have a very tall husband mm-hmm. and he uses the same Megan bed. Mm. So, so let's talk about the, the cost. You said the new ones are expensive. How much is a new one and how much is the... The gently used one. Yes. Yeah, so um, new ones, I believe, are around twenty five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, and the I found a gently used one. Now I live in the Bay Area, so there are people here who are often looking for and buying the latest of everything. Mm-hmm. So I managed to find a used one for two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and I sent my husband out with a truck to go get it and bring it home. And that was an incredible deal. I have had to do some maintenance on it. Um, the amazing thing about this Megan bed, uh, manufacturer here in the United States is they are extremely helpful. I've called the, I've done maintenance numerous times. They've responded. They've told me exactly what to do. So that was great too. So, so Megan is more of a, category or type rather than necessarily a brand name? It's a great question. 
I've wondered this before. I believe that it is there on the site. The description is Megan Medical Instruments Company, Megan Therapy Products. So my sense is that this is um, sort of their own development that they've named Megan. I think it's it's their own version of a but, therapy but, table. But other kinds or other people, other outfits may make Megan tables. I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm curious about that. I would love it if somebody would tweet me and let me know. I, my sense is Megan is the one, this company Megan, and they have the Megan bed. That's my sense of it. Okay. Okay. It's like a one of a kind. My sense is that it's one of a kind. Now there probably is a whole world of therapy tables that I, that I don't know that much about. And this is just the one I landed in and I love, but I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm curious about that. And, and again, is there, are there moving parts or are there parts that move by themselves or, or like the rolling balls who just, they roll? It's a great of, question. So imagine, it, yes, imagine it this way. There are two balls that are, that kind of come up and down like whack-a-mole does, you know, like just a little up and down <laughs> uh -huh. and they go, they go all the way up your body. So these two balls are going up, down, up, down, up, down, and they're moving up your body as they do that. And so they're on tracks. They're on like sort of almost like a camera is on tracks. But do you have to plug the table in for the power? Yes, you have to plug the table the into table. power and there is a handheld remote where you decide which one of the different uh, it shows you different parts of your body and different techniques that, that it can do. Some of them are more infrared oriented. Some are more the jade ball oriented. So in a kind of a very large Broadway, it's kind of like a massage table. It's like a massage table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's, it's exactly like that. And it, okay. I think it was developed for chronic pain specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds like a good one. Um, and like how tall off the ground is it? The picture is not clear. It's probably about two feet, three. It's hip level for a person mm -hmm. who's around mm, five, seven, which is my height. Or a little bit lower than that. Yeah. We have, we have multiple people in the family here with back complaints. I believe you can go. There are some places where you can go and try them out for a mm. while too. I had the I had the good luck of being able to try it out at this friend and then my sister in law's house, and that that was the convincing factor for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, it worked, that it worked on you. Yeah. yeah. So the next one, this is something that I haven't bought, but it also sounds like something everyone in our family could benefit from. <laughs> but I don't know how it works or why or whatever. The weighted blanket. <laughs> the weighted blanket. I know this has been discussed at length in many different places. And I actually had wondered if it was on cool tools. Then I did a search and I saw someone did mention it, but it wasn't, it was in 2017. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know what? This merits another conversation. Yeah. Because Technology has yeah, advanced. Yes. Especially and since I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and this really is an amazing thing that was originally developed for, um, for kids, originally it was developed for kids that had sensory disorders or um, other autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and what what everyone found was, well, it, it works for all of us. Um, now, I I have an anxiety disorder, so I might be even more oriented towards this. But I've seen people, all different types of people, who um, the weighted blanket works for, and I would describe it. Uh, how do you feel when you go to the dentist and they put the heavy <laughs> the lead? lead. Uh -huh. How does that yeah. feel for you? Right, right. I do love you it. Like it. You love yeah. it. Yeah. Then it's the like weighted blanket hugged. is for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then the weighted blanket is for you. It's really mm -hmm. similar to that. Some mm -hmm. not everyone likes it. Some people feel claustrophobic, but if you're someone that responds to that feeling of weight, weighted blanket is for you. And so what is, so is there lead inside the blanket or how does that even work? So, so it's a great, it's a great question. And many different brands, I mean, just a panoply of, of brands out there of weighted blankets. I've, I've had four different brands of weighted blankets oh. here. We currently have three at our house um, wow. and, and they each have different mechanisms of weight. Some of them are pellets, like little sort of um, almost like plastic pellets. I, I, I don't recommend that because if you have an animal, they can 
rip and then the pellets come out and that's no fun. Glass beads are pretty great. Um, much cleaner if you do have a rip. Um, and then some of them, um, there is a weighted blanket that's super popular. That's just a very heavy cotton that's laced with some sort of weight mechanism. So I, I don't know exactly why that cotton, that heavy cotton, cotton blanket is so weighted. There's also many styles. So it kind of looks like a quilted uh, blanket with little squares of quilting. And then inside of those are the weights. And um, the ones that fill with glass beads or plastic beads, they must be quilted in some sense. So they Yes. Don't. That's exact yes, that's exactly right. And is and the one that's maybe just heavy duty cotton, maybe interwoven with I don't know, some metallic, I don't know, threads, that one doesn't necessarily have to be quilted, is that right? That is exactly right. You took okay. the words out of my mouth. That's exactly how it works. Uh-huh. Has have anybody tried the leaded? Um, <laughs> the I mean, leaded it's a version? great question. I Wouldn't wonder that if that's cool? where it all like you, have a, you have a hundred pound leaded um, blanket. That would be the ultimate, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like someone who should have one of these for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So, so how do you use it? I sleep under it every night. My husband oh, really? can't believe it. I mean, he's like, this is, he calls it the cave in. He has no interest in this. He has a very different disposition than I do. Uh huh. But when I go in, it's sort of just on my side of the bed. And, um, so it's sort of half of our bed in width. Uh -huh. And, um, I try to keep it sort of flattened out. It doesn't move around a lot. Like I can stick one leg out, but you really, you're not, you're not flipping with when you have the weighted blanket on you, you're kind of, there's a, there's a feeling that you really are covered and it's time to relax. So, so I, I was just sort of imagining that you would use it like during the day or something while you were reading, but no, you're, you're talking about you actually sleep under. I it. mean, for, for me and my daughter, all, me and my daughter, we both sleep underneath the weighted blankets. Oh, okay. Huh. And it, that's not like suffocating over. Well, I think that's where it comes back to different people feel differently. Uh -huh. I mean, my husband would never want to sleep underneath this. Um, but for me, um, it's incredible and genuinely helps me sleep more deeply. I have um, an old colleague that I once recommended the way to blanket to, and he said it completely changed his sleep, that he actually stays asleep at times that he wouldn't have otherwise. Wow. I know. It's incredible. Huh. Huh. I mean, that's, again, these these are the things for me that I really come back to, like the Megan bed and the weighted blanket. I mean, these these really have made a difference. So um, d just one last thing. The the way that the um, my own experience in this is, is the lead apron at the dentist. That um, fits very, very um, tightly against your body. Does this... Besides the fact that there's weight, does this also do the same thing where it's conforming to? It does. Yes. Now I put a body? sheet underneath, uh -huh. but it do, it really when it comes down on you, it is conforming to your body, which I, I love. And that's where maybe the, the the security and comfort come from. Yes. Okay. Wow. Um, so how much does a weighted blanket cost? Yeah, it's a great question. You can definitely, and there are some rundowns of different price points. I have always liked very heavy weighted blankets, which tend to be a little more expensive. I think you could expect to pay around. Yeah, like you could get like a one ton, a two ton, or a three ton. <laughs> yeah, I one ton, please. Um, <laughs> make it gray like an elephant and put it right on me. Um, I th I would say that for you around one hundred and fifty dollars up uh -huh. to two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Now there are some out there that are only fifty to eighty dollars. I haven't tried that, but in the past they've always yeah. been around one hundred and fifty to two hundred. Those ones are fifty. They they seem lightweight to me. They do. Uh, I feel like there's no <laughs> way they're strong enough. <laughs> um. Okay. So oh, well, actually, they do have the the weight. So it's twenty pounds. 20 pounds. For... Yeah, they say you're supposed to do 10% um, of your body weight. So 200 pounds, you'd get a 20 pound one. Oh, 10%. Uh, interesting. Huh. But I think I, I think I have one that's, I think one of mine is like 28 pounds. 
and that is not 10 percent of my weight so i think i think it's you know that's just a starting right, point <laughs> right okay at least 10 percent um well this is okay so you were suggesting uh, a particular brand which is the layla weighted blanket and now, is that I, uh, um, for a particular reason? That yes, this particular I suggest this one because I have two dogs and I like them to sleep with me. <laughs> and so it's once... not just it's you no, and this two is, dogs. Oh my gosh. I, it's a busy, and you know what? I like it when the dogs sleep on me too, on top of this weighted blanket. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I think I could have an infinite amount of weight on me, actually. <laughs> Um, yes. So this, this one that I'm, that I linked to is for other dog people, because it's hard to find one that works with dogs. And, and basically they're just one of the sides of the All blanket, right. um, is, no, is better yeah. for the no, dog situation. If I, if I imagined 20 pound blanket and two dogs, I also imagine getting quite warm. So do they have like a refrigerated version of it? <laughs> they have a they they have one that has a cooling cover. Now the <laughs> cooling cover simply is a is sort of a bamboo lightweight cover, and my daughter has it, and it does stay cooler. Um, so Hush makes the the cooling weighted okay. blanket. I think you need one of those kinds of circulating things that they use in sports athletes. I mean, honestly, if I, if I could go and just work with people on all these different tools, I'd be so happy. I love stuff like this. Okay. Oh, yeah. All righty. Um, yeah, this is a whole other world that I was not aware of. But um, <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is um, – and now I kind of – I don't know. I guess I could have – that's my wife to sleep on top of me or something. She like, <laughs> Start there. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. Put your book, put your massive tome on top of yourself. Yeah. My book. yeah. Stuff that three volume pounds. thing into oh, a yeah. sleeping bag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, this is fantastic. Um, so tell us about another cool tool that you have, Meredith. I also, this is the, you know, it's, I have so many things that I want to share that it was hard to narrow down, but my next cool tool is a book that was originally published in 1998 called the culture of fear. And it's subtitle is why Americans are afraid of the wrong things. The reason now, the reason that I wanted to share this is that I truly believe that the ideas which were sort of foundational to this study of fear. Um, and there have been many people, including Steven Pinker who continue in this world now and are publishing now. Um, but th this was the original book that I was introduced to when I first met my husband that had a foundational effect on how I evaluated danger. And as someone who has an anxiety disorder, I am oriented into worrying about things or, or thinking that there could be danger where there isn't. I my amygdala is like kicking at all times. So um, this book helped me frame what really what is really happening, how statistics work, what, um, what is, you know, how, how does it work being on an airplane versus driving a car? Where, where should we spend our time? Um, when we, why, why did we have the satanic panic? Why are we so worried about our kids walking to the store? And how does, what, what role does media play? Um, to sort of see behind the curtain of the narratives that are out there and uh, and, and learn how to evaluate risk. And, and this, did this help you in terms of changing your patterns or your approach? It did. I mean, bringing consciousness to the things that I fear um, and being intentional about pushing back, um, using data is has been formative for me. And so what's an example of one way that you used the, um, the contents? The kidnapping, the kidnapping, kidnapping is, is a big one. And I see this with mm. a lot of, so I have an 11 year old daughter and I see this with a lot of her friends and their parent and her friend's parents who are scared to have their kids ever be out of their sight, um, not have tracking devices on them, not know where they are at all times. And when you start to see the genuine numbers around kidnappings um, and how truly rare it is for a child 
to be kidnapped by a stranger. I mean, it's under 300 people a year, I think it was. I, I should double check that. But the, the number is very small. It's definitely under 1,000 kids a year in all of America. And you start to understand what that stat looks like and what that means. And even in those circumstances, um, those those are, you know, those there are lots of varied elements within even that number. You start to realize like, hey, what is the risk of not allowing your kid to grow um, their own sense of independence or their own, you know, and start to grow their own sense of um evaluate evaluating their own risk you know mm -hmm. you kind of have to you have to let your kids do that a little bit but knowing the data and following this school of thought and and it started here but there are definitely again many studies and about this um and whenever i hear it how things are going right like ha what is actually happening that the media is just how media works, which we all know, but it's just helpful to actually hear the data underneath. It, it really does help me sort of go against my um, biological orientation. So going back to the kidnapping example, so reading that and seeing that and working through that, that allowed you to maybe have your daughter go out somewhere that you may not have been able to do before. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, I let her we, you know, I let her go to the store even at dusk, which would have scared me to no end. But, you know, I, I, yes, we're much, I'm much more likely to push back on some of those fear instincts as a result. Uh, have, have you read the free range kids? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 yeah That's definitely. kind of along the same lines, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And and part of it is um, understanding what social animals we humans are and how much we do want to help each other. Um, and that it's not that the stories that you're hearing are rare that gets right. Sh shared. Right, right. Yeah. OK, so that's called The Culture of Fear by Barry Glasner. Yeah. And it, by the way, it also was updated in a post-Trump era. So there's some interesting more relevant ideas there too yeah cool yeah I, yeah fear makes us stupid so this <laughs> this keep his fear as little as possible yeah exactly um so um you have a fourth cool tool for us um an app tell us about uh your favorite app here this app is it's called the two dots puzzle game and when I first, someone, when I work with a lot of designers at Pinterest, and one of the designers mentioned that this was beautifully designed. And so when I first downloaded it, I was appreciating just the attention to detail and the design that went into this puzzle app. And I've always loved jigsaw puzzles, beading projects, anything that I can sort of do with my hands while still having a conversation with someone else. That's sort of how I'm oriented anyway. And I, I really started to love this game. Um, it, it is, it is, you know, it is in the world of Candy Crush, but it's certainly not Candy Crush in that you are um, basically learn, sort of learning these different, these different little skills within the app, and you're definitely moving up the ladder, and you're, you're moving through different. Um, I don't know levels of the game, but is there's it kind something of like a brain game they sometimes call them, where you actually these are kind of like little different uh, exercises for your brain of different types. You know, I think that uh, that would be giving it more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's more, more relaxing than that, and okay. the reason that I decided to put it on this list is that it has come through for me and has become more of a. I've learned recently that um, there are different kinds of distractions that we can use as a regulate as an emotional regulation tactic. And, you know, for a lot of people that could be eating a pint of ice cream or drinking, you know, having a few cocktails or going for a walk or going for a run. You know, we all have these different distraction strategies. Two dots is my distraction activity, and it's one that doesn't have too negative an out of an outcome for me. So it's something that I can do that doesn't have me eating food that will have 
you know, sugar or so I would describe it as a positive distraction. Okay. If you're oriented that way, if you're somebody who wants to just relax and sort of take your mind off of something in order to transition, this is what I recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the game is, is there more than one game or is it just different levels of the same game? It, it, it you ha- it's always introducing new games off to the side within the app. So there's sort of a main trajectory, and then there are a bunch of secondary and tertiary games that you can also play that have different. And, and one of them is um, a finding game. So it's like a, a really well designed and beautiful like spot it. Um, so it's it's definitely in keeping with many of the games you've already played, maybe on your your phone. But in this case, it's just very beautifully designed, and the color is very aesthetically pleasing too. Okay, but that, a lot of the games have to do with dots or connecting dots of some sort. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's really great. So um, thank you for that. That's on the uh, iOS. Maybe it's on. I think um, it's Android on Android Play? too. I actually okay. think I found it on Android too. I have iOS, but I think, sure. yeah, yeah, and it's um, it's free. It's I- free, but you you, I when I first started using it, I did get sucked into paying for certain things. I I stopped doing that, <laughs> but like you, you can get sucked into paying for things, but you don't certainly don't have to. Um. So, you know, Mary, you work at Pinterest. Do you mind talking about Pinterest a little bit? Because I think it's underrated as a tool. And I, I'm like, you know, it's a little bit often imagined, slanted towards women. But I think Thank more you. guys should. Thank you I for think, saying that because I completely agree with you. I think more guys should use it because I find it as, you know, design wise, just an incredible tool. And I'm wondering kind of um, what, um, what's, new there that maybe I even don't know about because I'm not a power user. So can you talk about maybe how you use uh, Pinterest? So I, I use Pinterest. I've always um, been interested in how people organize their worlds. Um, And so for example, when I was working on my book, I had um, was working with an artist and a designer because the, the look and the aesthetics of the book were super important to the message as well. And uh, I put the cover out before the book was published on Pinterest and I got to see what kinds of people it drew, like who was interested in it and where did they put on which boards would they put the book? Oh. And it helped me understand how they thought of it. And can anybody that I, do that? Can I do And that? by the way, anybody can do that. Oh, anybody can do that. that. Pinterest is a really interesting tool for understanding how people conceptualize things. Now, there's oh. also a part of Pinterest that's Pinterest trends. Uh-huh. And in Pinterest trends, that's an entire world where you can see things that might surprise you that are like bubbling up. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's it, Pinterest trends is a really because there are well, explain millions and millions trends. of people. I don't know what that means. What yeah, so so mean? let me see. I'm going to it right now. I think it's Pinterest slash trends. And you basically, is that what it is? You basically can go in and look at what topics are trending. Okay. Um, And, and it's might surprise you like, you know, ghost nails or, sure, sure. And, and, but on all ty- types of to- types of topics. But it's not like a Google N graph where you can kind of give it something and say, what are the trends? About so this? I'm, I just fa- I just found it by the way, and it's trends.pinterest.com. Okay. And when I look at surging trends on Pinterest this week, um, we have devil costume aesthetic frat boy costume i mean everything is halloween as you can imagine right. yeah right and then when you start going in al- um, alter de muertos creativos in casa you start to like it starts to open your world and then when you go under travel for example you see dune and there's like it takes you into these pathways of like what is dune travel because dune was just released you know, mm-hmm. as a movie. Right, right, right. And so it's just starts, it's just an interesting world. If you're a creative or you're looking to be inspired mm-hmm. to think about what are, what are people thinking about and what are they making? I like this idea, which I'd not thought about of, I make something, I design something and I put it out then to see 
it's like a focus group. I can see how other people react. Yes, to because forward. because the audience cares about design so much. Right. And you can really start to see and understand what's happening. Now, I I need to also mention that I work in the um, Pinterest product lab. So I get to work on a lot of new products that are coming, and I'm really excited about some of those. One is launching next week, um, which is Pinterest. We call it Pinterest TV. It's really live streaming, but it's got a little bit of a different focus because people, we have a, a set of producers working with people on their ideas to be able to bring them to life and then engage with people in real time through chat. So we've got like a bunch of new things that are coming as well to help people connect with the ideas that inspire them. But I do think for you, if you're an author, this, this getting your book out and understanding who it's appealing to, if it's a design oriented book is very powerful. And um, what are some, maybe some other um, ways that power users might use Pinterest that people aren't aware of, of for the current things? Um, you mentioned trends. You can kind of follow trends. Um, there's, um, I, I mean, one of the things that, that I have a little trouble with is uploading my own stuff to, to, to Pinterest. I know you can do it, but it's not the easiest thing for me to do for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. um, are there... Uh, other other ways that the kind of real pros use Pinterest um, in a maybe professional way? Yes, we have um, a series. It's actually on Pinterest TV. There, one of the the series was uh, Pinterest Pro Tools hidden features, and so um, we have things like inclusive beauty, where you can use your own hair texture to understand how to find um, ideas for your hair. That's something that just was released. Or we have itinerary planning um, and understanding how to build an itinerary um, in a different a visual way on Pinterest. Right, 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 right. Do you guys, I mean, have you ever seen same.energy? No. Okay, same energy is this, is this a visual search engine that will give you um, images that are have the same energy as, I love the, that. as your target one. I love that. And, and it uses AI. And I'm wondering if, if Pinterest is use, could or has a tool where you can kind of really get things that are very similar in different kind of dimensions. Okay, here's something. You are, I, you are anticipating some things. <laughs> I will tell you. That I dream of a motion searching yes. of like helping you move into, but that's the idea. Well, that's what same energy. Look, look at, yeah, look I at see that. Energy yeah. and, um, it's really cool. I'm looking at it now, and I love it. And um, you can put in a, you can put in a uh, image, and then it'll come out with all the images that oh. they're not about the same subject. They're but different, but they have the same feel to them. I love that. I love 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 that. Yes, you are definitely anticipating some thinking that we're we're having and some new things that are going to be coming out. Um, and, well, this has really been very, very helpful. Thank you for your suggestions. Um, I'm looking forward to the new things on, on Pinterest. And I, and I feel like I know maybe only 5% of what actually is going on. Well, there. you now have an inside scoop <laughs> and feel free <laughs> to yeah. reach out. And I'm happy to help you yeah, okay. navigate as you think about different ways you might want to sure. use it. Meredith, before we jump off, Tell us a little bit about your book, Get Out of My Head, Inspiration for Overthinkers in an Anxious World. Thank you, Mark. I So this, this book was many years um, in the making, though it is deceptively um, spare when you look at it, but really it is a compilation of all of the different strategies for uh, for overthinkers. So if you're someone who may be prone to rumination or or thinking to the point where you have effects in your body, which is me, um, what are some things that we can do to help ourselves and how can we reframe anxiety in a way that encourages creativity and excitement and curiosity? which is how I feel about these topics. I mean, everything that I've shared with you comes from my feeling that that anxiety is actually a really interesting experience that leads me to a lot of curiosity about how we connect as people. And so the book 
is filled with strategies shared by beautiful voyagers around the world. Beautiful Voyager is the site I started for overthinkers of things that have worked for them. And it's designed, um, I did it in, in conjunction with the artist Leah Rosenberg, who uh, was the former director of the Color Factory in New York, who is an amazing artist who works with color and emotion and who describes color as a, vi- a vitamin, a multivitamin that you take every day <laughs> to help you feel better. And so, yeah. you know, a lot of it is filled with ideas like catchphrases. Like my catchphrase is protect the head, which means that I, when I evaluate an idea, should I do this or should I not do this? I think, okay, am I protecting the head through my decision? Am, am I doing this with the longer term consequences in mind? Or am I just saying yes? Um, protect the head is a catchphrase that helps me come back to good decision making. So the book is basically filled with ideas like that. That sounds great. Did, how did you do the research for the different ideas? Uh, thank you for asking. I need to send you both copies of the book. Um, the I did research um, over the course of five years. So basically, after working at a bunch of startups, I got this piece of information about myself, which is that I have generalized anxiety disorder. And it was the greatest thing, actually, because I had no idea. No one had ever spotted it in my life. And this was a major turning point moment. So I started a site to gather insights from other people around the world and to understand like, wait, is are the traits, the things I'm experiencing true, like in different cultures? Do we all have this? What are overthinkers? And the answer is yes. Um, there is consistency there across cultures. And there are lots and lots of things we can experiment with to see if they help us. So it's filled with experiments. That's how I describe them. Um, things to try. For example, um, changing your body temperature. I mean, we've definitely heard about Wim Hof and others who sort of sit in the snow, to, but you can do it for yourself in a much smaller way where if you're experiencing stress or anxiety, simply taking off a layer, opening a window. It's these small things, but they actually, once you start to understand that you can change how you feel, they become powerful. That sounds great. And I imagine for people who haven't been diagnosed with general anxiety disorder, but just experience it regularly, as I think almost everyone does, these kinds of things are probably helpful too. Absolutely. I mean, the truth is that these are the kinds of small strategies that work for any, really any stress situation. Um, It's just some of us didn't, who are overthinkers may not realize what overthinking is doing to us. So I just wanted to really bring light to that, that overthink, you know, I used to use it as a badge of honor. It used to be on my social media, like overthinker. And I would say it proudly, but actually I learned over time, like, Hey, that's, that's not a great trait. We need to work on that and, and figure out different ways to, to navigate the world as a sensitive person, uh, you know, and, and set, set up some guardrails really. That sounds really good. So it's called Get Out of My Head, Inspiration for Overthinkers in an Anxious World. Meredith, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. Thank you both so much. I really enjoyed this. Hey, everybody. It's your co-host, Mark. And I wanted to let you know that we have a lot more going on here in Cool Tools than just this podcast. We have our flagship website where we review a new tool every day. That's at cool-tools.org. We also have four different newsletters. We have this podcast. We have a YouTube channel where we review tools. And if you like what you hear and see and read, the best way to help us out is by going to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash cool tools and donate at any level you wish. You can even contribute $1 a month, and, and that would mean a lot to us. The money that you give us will go towards paying for our transcribing costs, editing videos and editing the podcast. It goes towards paying contributors who write the reviews for us. It goes towards our equipment costs, our hosting costs, and it supports our very small company of three people. This week, I wanted to give a shout out to some of our Patreon supporters who have been giving us at least $2 a month. And if you give us $2 a month, we'll give you a shout out online. And this week, I would like to thank 
Michael Sacochia, Molly Starr, M. Velderman, Opposable Thumbs, Pamela Cooley, Patrick Weyer, Paul Hosey, Randy Fisher, Stuart Burroughs Brand, Synaptic Sam, Therese Schwartz, Tom Hawkins, Tom Markham, What Bear, Javier Pangolin, David Lang, Eric Byers, Sean Hartley, Stephen Powell, Greg Lichtscheidt, John Hobson, Adam Bristol, Adam Naher, Anonymous, Bill Kempthorne, Bruce I. Niles, Chris Woodruff, C. Kolos, Daryl Flynn, Egg Fliegoff, Eric Hanschrau, Eric Hoover, Godfrey Saldana, Jay Skiles, John M. Larson, Jude Galligan, Kenneth Gilman, and Lucas Frank. Thank you very much for supporting the show, and we will see you next week.